can feel the love in this place. Oh my God, I know I can. Thank y'all for the beautiful welcome and your beautiful energy. It is so awesome. It really is. All right, let's get into it. Today's mug shot of the day. It's coming from Dr. Jeanette Devine of Wardoff, Maryland. There she is with her. Oh, look at them beautiful mugs. Okay, I know she sent me one. Here is the mug she sent me. And she also sent me a little note. Y'all want to hear it? Yeah. Hey, Dr. Jeanette. It's me, Jennifer. Okay, let's see what she says. Dear Jen, congratulations on your new show. I've been enjoying it. This is Mulan. That's our little kitty up there. It's my Siamese little furry one. Like you, I am a cat lover and a mug collector. So here's a mug to add to your collection. Looking forward to being on your show one day. Here go the mug right here, guys. Check it out. Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming it's for Hudson. So I'm gonna take that, Dr. Jeanette, and I'm gonna take my sip too. <laughs> you ain't want none, did you? <laughs> Honey, mm -mm. <sighs> That's for me right there. Listen, listen, I love this mug, Jeanette, but let me tell you something. I noticed on this picture, you got, y'all see these other two mugs? Just the kitty cat on there? Then that other one is nice and colorful. So Jeanette, let's make a deal. Because I'm a shopping, I'm shopping on you, and I love a photo. But Jeanette, I need you to send me both of those mugs on the side. Don't y'all think I should? <laughs> and so, Jeanette, I'll make a I will trade you. If you send me those two mugs, then of course I'm gonna send you some J Hud mugs from the Jennifer Hudson show. <laughs> I, that's fair, right? Okay. So thank you for watching, Dr. Jeanette, and I hope to see you soon. And make sure you guys go to the JenniferHudsonShow.com or hit us up on socials if you would like for us to feature you and your mug on our show, okay? <laughs> now, we're about to do something I love to do on this show because I could get deep all up in y'all business without looking nosy. Uh, oh, don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> we surveyed the audience, y'all, and the results are in. It is time for Survey Say! <laughs> I'm about to get in y'all business. Okay, here's the first one. We sent out a survey and asked the audience, how many people have ever had an unusual encounter with a celebrity? Now, don't, don't tell on yourself. Let me guess first. Huh. Oh, y'all got real quiet, too. <laughs> got your poker face on and all. I would say 20. All right, let's see. Bring the envelope. Drum roll. Thank you, Elizabeth. Ooh, okay, and the number of people who've had an unusual encounter with a celebrity is 40. <laughs> I was off by 20. Okay, who did this happen to? Hello. Hi. What's your name and where are you Alyssa from? Alyssa from Los Angeles, originally from New York City. Nice. <laughs> What happened, child? We want to know. So when I moved here a few years ago, I decided to take a hot, trendy, super cool exercise class religiously in Studio City. And as I was leaving one day, this beautiful young girl who I'd see at class all the time, huh. we were walking out and I turned around and I said to her, I said, I just don't understand why there's paparazzi here every single time I'm here. <laughs> and she's like, ooh, I think it's for me. And I was like, who are you? Oh my God. Who was it, Chad? It was Ashley Simpson Ross. Oh, oh wow. That's yes. nice. I got to go to where you went then. I'll tell you where to go. OK, tell us <laughs> about it. Show sure again. Thank you for that. OK, here's another one. We sent out a survey and asked the audience, how many people have ever ruined a piece of clothing they borrowed from someone? Mmm. Ooh, child. Yeah, I'm looking over here. <laughs> uh, I think this is a bit more common. So, 50? I'm gonna go with 50. Envelope. Envelope, please. Can I trade you? Thank you. You see that? All right. 
Huh. Oh, see, I ain't got it together today. And the number one, the number of people who have ruined a piece of clothing they borrow from someone is 20. <laughs> who done did that, child? What's your name and where are you from? Hi, my name is Anitra and I'm from Ontario, California. Nice. So, my dad was getting married and his wife-to-be requested that everyone wear African attire, the bridal party, and his children and her children. So, I didn't have one, so I asked her could I borrow one and she gave it to me and in the midst, it had wrinkles in it. So, I went to iron it and it ironed the hole in it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I wore the wrap part, but after 25 years, they've been married for 25 years now, I think she's still upset. Oh, she <laughs> is. Oh, goodness. Yes. Well, you know what? I don't know what to say to that, but thank you for sharing that. <laughs> that. That actually reminds me of this scar that I have right here, just thinking of ironing, I, when I was a little girl, I decided I was going to iron my snowsuit. And I tried to do that, and to this day, I have this scar because it said and fried my whole hand, child. That just sent me down memory lane. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. All right, last one. We sent out a survey and asked the audience how many people have ever said someone else's ooh, name in a moment of passion. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yep, I'm looking at you. Hold on. Let me think about this. Oh, y'all smiling and everything. Ooh, child. Oh, don't you look away. Look at him. He looking over there on the side. Yep, you, sir. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 40. Come on, let's see. I really want to know the answer to this. All right. Man. And the number of people who's, who have said someone else's name in the moment of passion is 23. Hello. <laughs> sir, what is your name? Where you from and what happened? Hi, I'm Randy. I'm from Bedford, New Hampshire. All right. And uh, give him a hand. Thank you. So I got into a little argument with my girlfriend at the time. This is many years ago, and I can't remember what the argument was about, but mm. it became very passionate, and oh, okay. uh, until the point where I accidentally. Uh, said the wrong name and uh, called her my ex-girlfriend, Michelle. Whoa. Yeah, I'd, I apologized right away. <laughs> and uh, there was no winning that argument after yeah. that. But we, we both won, I think. I, we've been married for 20 years. Oh, my God. Well, y'all are some interesting people. Thank y'all for sharing these stories. And let me get in y'all business. We got a great, great show. We'll be right on back. I hope y'all are ready to laugh. Our first guest is a stand-up comedian who you know as one of the hilarious correspondents on The Daily Show. Give it up for Roy Wood Jr. You just won an NAACP Image Award recently. Congrats. How does that feel? It, it, it feels good, you know. I know, I know you got an EGOT, but see, I'm trying to go after the knee God. I put that in, <laughs> the N for NAACP, <laughs> and then I'm gonna get the knee God. But I'm on my way. Oh. I'm creeping. I'm creeping. You're creeping. I'm creeping up there. Okay. <laughs> you live in New York. You you yeah. enjoy traveling to the West Coast. I don't. I don't mind travel. I just, I would wish, like, with everything that's going on with the airlines this year, you know, mm -hmm. it's always some snafus, a big storm, or whatever. Just, if the flight is delayed, don't tell me why. Mm. I just don't want to know. I'm one of them people, I don't want to know what's wrong with the plane. <laughs> just, when it's time, I will trust that when the plane is moving, that you have checked all the buttons. Yeah. And know that it's time to move. Because, like, you'll get on the plane now, and the captain will be like, ladies and gentlemen, it's a delay. Uh, the hydraulic holes, and we're going to duct tape it. Oh, no. Did you just say duct tape over the intercom? <laughs> I don't want to hear the word duct tape, but we've been up 30,000 feet, 500 miles an hour. That's a good and point. And I'm supposed to trust the duct tape? Just tell me, just lie. I would rather just lie. Tell 
this like? You, I don't know if you rode the school bus. I, I don't know if you rode the school bus going to school. My sister's a school bus driver. Okay. So then you know, when you, like, you be on the school bus and the school bus get to smoking, school bus driver, what they say? Sit down back there and just shut up. That's, that's the kind of pilot I want. That's what you want the pilot to say? Just tell me shut up. I don't need to know what's going on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You are hilarious. <laughs> you have a six-year-old son, huh? Yeah. What is it like raising him in New York? It's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. WNBA game, New York Liberty. They gave him a ball at that game. I, it, it's... It's interesting because I'm from Alabama, so okay. I'm a southerner. Ah. I don't know nothing about New York. <laughs> I don't know nothing about raising no city kid. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him how to ride the train. I'm scared of the train. I, like, I don't... <laughs> so I'm trying to, but you know, that's what parenting is about. Parenting is about preparing your children for a world that yeah. you don't even know what it's going to be evolving into. So when we see stuff out in the city, you know, you grow up faster as a child in New York yeah. because you're around adults and everything. Like, in the South, it's your neighborhood. And your neighborhood is just your people. You're not downtown. You're not in the suburb. New York, it's everybody on top of each other. I'm like, yes, son, that is a pigeon eating a rat. <laughs> Life be like that sometime. Come on, let's get on the track. <laughs> like, you wouldn't see that in the South. That's no. like a special summertime treat. When you see an animal eating another animal, New York City, that's every two blocks. <laughs> But it's, it's just, it's interesting, though, because, like, when I think about the world I'm trying to prepare him for, it's, it's weird, especially in raising a black man. Right. And how do I treat him to be friendly in a world mm. where people eventually might fear him? Mm. And how do I treat him to be benevolent? And it's even more difficult when you talk about, like, conversations about the police or racism. And I want my son to grow up in a world that, you know, that he would err on the side of assuming the best of people and not the worst of people. Mm. But also, you need to be your ass prepared in case something go down. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know how <laughs> to balance that. Yes. You know, I love your On The Daily Show. It is amazing with Trevor Noor. That's the homie. What, That's is, the it, homie. what is it like now that he's left? It's, it's been different. You know, we've had a run of guest hosts, and thankfully, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm finally getting an opportunity myself to step on the desk. Yes. And try to do my thing a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, but the mission has not changed of the show. There's a lot of craziness in the world. We have to try and break that down and make it simple, make it plain, and make it funny. And so, you know, wherever my journey goes, you know, continuing with The Daily Show, after The Daily Show, I'm thankful that Trevor Noah gave me an opportunity for the last seven, eight years to be a part of that journey and tell relevant stories. Like, we don't always just get on there and jokey joke. We step into real issues that are going on in the country and try our best to make them funny, but at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff ain't, it ain't a laughing matter. You're right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I'm thankful to still have a check to take my son to WNBA games. That's <laughs> right, and you're doing a mighty job doing it, too. Oh, my God. Were there any signs that Trevor was leaving that you noticed at all? I knew Trevor was leaving when he stopped cutting his hair. <laughs> like, to me, that was the point. See? So that was it. The yeah, transition. right there, when it was like, he got the afro, and then he tried to trick white folks by getting it edged up. I was like, you can't trick me. Because yeah. he, when he started The Daily Show, it was all nice and low cut, and then after the <laughs> pandemic, he was like, Africa. I was like, ah, <laughs> let me buy a house real quick while I still got some W-2s. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stick around for a little bit? Absolutely, I'm I here. I hope you enjoy you the next show. Here. More with Roy Wood Jr. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back with Roy Wood Jr. You have a live show coming up? Yes, yes. We want to hear about it. Tell so, us. in addition to the Daily Show, we're doing a live stream show. Um, it's going to be on April 10th. Uh, me and some of my friends, we've been doing a show in New York City the last couple years called Tribulations. Mm. And we bring an audience into a room. They share with us what they're going through in their lives. Me and some comedians make fun of these people's problems. <laughs> but then we bring on a real therapist on stage, uh, this wonderful woman, B. Arthur. And B helps us break down these issues that people are going through. And it's just a collective community of people just in a room knowing that they're not alone yes. in whatever it is they're going through. And I'm not going to sit there and this is some be all end all, solve all the problem therapy show. But it is a way for you to know that you're not alone in whatever you're going through, and you can still laugh at it. And it's just something beautiful that we've done, and now we're trying to open it up to the whole world online through streaming. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Love that.
And you're hosting at the White House your correspondent, the dinner? Yeah, the White House correspondent's dinner. This is where we just get a bunch of people in the room and then I tell them all about their problems. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them people about their problems. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I was gonna ask, are you nervous? How do you even prepare for something like that? The, one, you gotta watch all the news, you gotta take in all the horrible stuff in the world, and then you got to figure out who is to blame, and then you just gotta walk in the room with the people to blame. <laughs> like, the, this, is what I, this is what I explain the correspondence dinner to essentially be. Like, remember every time you've ever gone in a store and demanded to speak to the manager. Uh -huh. I want to speak to the owners. <laughs> I think we ought to do that. And you never get to speak to them. <laughs> Correspondence dinner, you get to speak to all their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Every single That's manager of it. this country is going to be there, including the head supervisor, Joe Biden. You got to have something to say. <laughs> to every last one of them, and you still got to make it out of the room safely. How? I don't know. <laughs> I keep asking Trevor about it. I'm like, how did you do it last year? He goes, I can't talk to you. I'm in Africa. I'm on vacation. Stop. <laughs> like, I would be terrified to, like, look out there into the audience, you know, Seriously, when, when they're there. You, you perform. You've... So many performance trophies. How do you? Yeah, but you know, sometimes you gotta play a trick. Like, okay, it's just see a people, so you look above the people when it's you know intimidating people in in the no, crowd. No, but that's the thing, though, is that I cannot be intimidated by those people. Those people were elected by people like you and me. They should be intimidated <laughs> by me. Let them know. And they should be intimidated that I am the voice of the voter in the room in that moment. And if there is something that can be said to hold people accountable and hopefully change the sway of how we perceive politics in this country, to me, that's the ultimate goal of what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do with the Correspondents' Dinner, because Smart. we exist on these two edges when the truth is that most of America is right here in the middle, and we've lost the concept of nuance in this country. We just go, oh, it's that, so it must be everything must be wrong. But like, no, that's not what it is. So I'm hoping that we have an opportunity on the other side of whatever the hell I say to these folks <laughs> to have more nuanced political discussions on real issues in this country and not get so polarized and set down and baked in on one side of, you know, particular issues. Mm, sound like they got the right one, that is for sure. We'll see. And you're known for, like, being a foodie on social media. Yeah, a, a little bit. You, you know what the problem is? What? I'm the guy on social media that will challenge what people... First off, let me just... Before I even, before we even continue, let me just understand what, what, what type of, you know, what you own. Do you put bread... Do you believe in breadcrumbs and macaroni? I don't like macaroni. Don't fight me. That's, that's fine. <laughs> I'm OK with that. I'm OK with that. OK. They but put breadcrumbs they, they in it? They putting everything in the macaroni. They truffling it, Jennifer. <laughs> You putting truffles in everything. They putting the, 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 the spaghetti, they truffling all of it. I don't I like ain't it. Ain't no bread winning macaroni. The, 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 it's not supposed to go in macaroni. No. They putting lobster in it and all okay. that stuff. Stop yeah. disrespecting macaroni. It was fine for 40 years. But no, I, like, I'm the guy, I'll tweet now and then about food. And I always thought that, like, you know, I was famous enough to, like, get, like, a free PlayStation or something. Yeah. Somebody mailed me a coupon for 20 McRibs. What kind of energy <laughs> am I putting out that just says, yes, he would like not just one McRib, <laughs> 20. 20. <laughs> 20 McRib. Mountain Dew sent me hot sauce. I've, I got to figure out Mountain the Mountain Dew? I didn't know they made hot sauce. It, it must have been some trick, but I, I tried it. It tastes like teriyaki with, with cayenne pepper in it. It was chaos. <laughs> it was absolute chaos. Ruined the chicken wing with that nonsense. <laughs> You gonna stick around? Cause I, we got something for you to, you know, taste a bit. Okay. okay. All right. right. Some food now. All you right. Food. We gonna try some weird food. Okay. Combinations after okay. this. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. This is gonna be fun. We're back with Roy Wood Jr. Roy, since you're very opinionated about food and always getting asked to try different things, we thought we'd experiment on you. We thought we'd do <laughs> just that and try out some weird food combos here today. I am too excited. And here to walk us through this is my resident TikTok expert and talented booker. Oh, Ms. wow. Hey, Jess, you Hi, guys. Fancy that was a huge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. This, okay. This all look like food you eat when you don't have all the stuff you need to, to make. make regular food. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. This is TikTok for you. Okay. So are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. 
we so do we're going to start with our first stop. Did you already eat a Dorito? Yeah, I was eating it while I was still running. No, no, no. Okay, so we're going to start with the first one over here. So we've got Doritos, cream cheese, and some caviar. Who on TikTok told you this is... You better get up. <laughs> Who? Don't hate. Don't hate. Don't knock it until you try it. Okay. So we're going to... What you do is you watch... Do like I do. So everyone take a chip. Okay. All right. Take a chip. Take yep. A chip. Take a chip. Oh, Since you already had one in the first place. <laughs> I, I like cream cheese and crackers, so I can kind of yeah, understand. Yeah, kind of understand. Cream cheese and crackers. And if you like nachos and salsa, Here. there's cream cheese. Okay, but the caviar, why does that... You got it? Okay, great. Okay. Roy, why, why is that a part of this situation? Here. You also can dip it. You don't have to use a knife. This is yeah, really yeah, classy. Got it, got you got it? it? Okay, great. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to take a little spoon. Everyone take their spoon, because you guys can judge how much caviar you want. Okay. I'm not going to... Zero is the amount that I <laughs> Right? And you're just going to take a little caviar and put it on the chip. Come. Girl, Over I, don't here. Want, I don't want that. No. Just, a t just a, literally one. Do it with me. Like, just one. Do it with me. Come here. I want to do it. Give me it. Hey, try it. <laughs> oh, my God, this is so good. How are you? Wait, it's honestly it, it, not bad. No, it is bad. It is bad. <laughs> it tastes like a potato chip inside of like some some fish grease. I don't think I love caviar. <laughs> okay, no, I don't like caviar. Okay, I'm sorry. Great. It's fine. Yeah, oh my yeah, god, wait, that's actually kind of not like great. Fish grease, like cod liver oil or something. Is there water down there? Oh, okay, great. Okay. okay. So how do you get water? We... Right. We <laughs> <laughs> don't want the water. Okay. See, she holding that on us, okay. boy. You gotta watch her. Bro, these watch young her. people, boy. These young people. Now, we're moving on to the mustard and Oreos. Now, TikTok is backing me up on this, but also Lizzo has also tried this as well. Y'all see this? Okay. So. You think Lizzo endorsing this is, gives me more confidence? Yes, it should. I like Lizzo, I but, like I don't, too. but I don't mean I trust her taste buds. So, I'm gonna do this for everyone. Why are we putting mustard on the Oreo? Who came up with this? Okay, is that like the sweet and tart? Exactly. It's basically the like contrast. sweet and salty. Oh, so I guess I'm just doing this myself. So salty and sweet. Okay. okay. Well, he's the guest, so I'm gonna let you, you be him. Okay, great. No, no, no. I, listen, I'm not scared. I'll try anything. Exactly. You have to try things once, and then you make um, a judgment call. Jen, here. It's kind of all right. Yeah, not bad. That's what I'm talking right. about. This is probably the best one. I'm sorry for raising my voice. It's all right. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, it's okay. This one's not bad. Yeah, this no one's bad. not bad. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, Look well, at me. Well, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, twang, moving on. Little twang. I think this one is kind of... This one's on you. This one's one of your favorites. Girl, you know I'm a chef, right? Mm-hmm. Let me show you. Listen. That's a strong word, but... Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a strong word, right? Strong word. I'm gonna back up. Listen. Okay. No one would try this, but I think you would. Okay. So, we have my good old potato chips right here, baby. Okay. And then I put my adobe on there. We call it all purpose seasoning in my house. Hello. With some lime juice, hot sauce, you know, you like it spicy, mustard, and some good old splendor. Okay? Look, so, you can't lower your octave I don't know if the audience sound you, but... delicious. <laughs> I see the trick you just tried to do. You're like, yeah, this adobo and splendor. <laughs> Combined. I just want you to know I'm still nervous. You scared? Okay. That's okay. But you never know until okay. you try. And also, so, remember when we thought this was gonna flop and then it did it? That's hidden. Right. I'm like, that's one of them foods. Like, if I'm at a black party, I'll sneak and eat that, <laughs> but won't let other black people know that that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. Okay. All right. Taste so, it. Taste hot sauce, it. adobo, lime, and splendor. Yo. Yeah! Yo. Child to the Fahatsu's Kitchen. I will hook you up. Look for them boiled eggs. Yo. Thank you so much. You like it? You can make me want some. You mind, you mind uh, if I, can I take this? You can't start right home with some. Well done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, this is good. This is a new flavor. It's this flavorish. Is okay. I don't know if I love the Splenda, but... Thank you, Roy, for Stella. coming to see about me. I appreciate I'm it. I gotta be careful with this hot sauce. I'm gonna special bag, all right? Just for you. Oh, this is so good. Go to RoyWoodJr.com to find out where you can see Roy next. Oh
We'll be right back. Yeah. Our next guest is an actress and singer who you know from the very popular shows, The Fosters and Good Trouble. Take a look. Evan has already put you in charge of his company. Which is stressful enough. And now you're supposed to be the one to decide whether he has a risky surgery? This burden shouldn't be yours. But it has to be mine. His sister can't make a decision. And, and I'm the reason why he might not be able to walk again because of the choices that I made. I asked you here to help me make a decision, not talk me out of it. So please just help me make the right one. Please welcome Sierra Ramirez. It is so nice to meet you. Oh Thank you for gosh. coming to the happy place. We're of happy to course. have you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. And um, how does it feel to be back on a Warner Brothers Live? Oh my goodness. It feels like home. I'm so happy to be here yeah. and to see you. Thank you. I literally, anytime I have a day off, your beauty just graces my screen. Oh. I love the show, so I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. That melts my heart. <laughs> Thank you for that. You've been acting since you were 10 years old. I, yes, I have. Oh my God, and were, were you performing before that? I was, I actually, I got into acting through singing. I'm from Houston, Texas. Nice. And, thank you. Houston, Texas <laughs> holds a lot of talent. It does, there's something Good. in the water, I swear. But I, I would sing a lot in like little local, um, like festivals and, and, and um, places around there, and, and mm. I had the opportunity to come out here to L.A. in a competition, so. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And you got to sing at the Apollo. I never did that. I sure did. I, like, how did that happen? Oh, my goodness. Well, one of those trips I, I made over to here to L.A., I, I found my agent, Thomas Richards, who's uh -huh. here with me today. Okay. Been with him ever since, since I was 10 years old. He introduced me to Suzanne DePass, and she brought me on the show, and it was just a dream come true. Nice. Um, your family, they post you a lot. They do. Do they? Very proud. Your mom is proud. Yes. What, do you, what kind of pictures does she post? Can I you see a few? Oh, okay, that one's a good one. You know, she, so someone cute. needs to take her phone away at times because. Oh, you wanted them? That's how yeah. I well, you know, she just, she loves that post button. Look how cute. See, okay. I'm, I like these. I I'll understand, make some good mom. Ones. Some of them are scary. Posting. I have to tell her, like, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta do a little approval system, you know, something like that, because she's out here trying to embarrass me. So she me. posts and you don't know she's posted? Yes. So she don't say, can I get your approval for this photo? Not often. You know, it's, I'll, I'll see pictures and I'm like, oh, how did, how did a fan page grab that one? <laughs> it was my mom. Mom. <laughs> and then you like, um, I saw you with, on the picture with the skull. Yes. What, yes. what, explain this, what's happening? You know what, ever since I was little, I have just adored Halloween. It's my oh. favorite holiday, anything spooky. That's just really? right up So you alley. like spooky stuff? Oh, all things spooky. What's the scariest thing you've ever tried? Ooh, I think I would have to say jumping out of a plane. And she's smiling. <laughs> jumping out of you a plane. You know what? <laughs> I guess I'm an adrenaline junkie. I, I just, I loved it. Would you do it again? I would definitely do it again. I think I would have to go even higher, where even you need higher. oxygen, because that free fall, it wasn't long enough for me. So roller coasters is nothing to oh. No, you're no. Brave. Hey. <laughs> and your boyfriend is, 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 is into scary things, too? He is, actually, yeah. He is? He so y'all jump out of planes together? Is that your date? Or? <laughs> you know, actually, he, I don't think he'd ever do that. I gotta, I gotta convince him one of these days. Is that how oh, y'all met, like, doing scary stuff? Like, how did y'all meet? No, you know what? We actually, we fell in love at the club. Oh. <laughs> okay. <It did. laughs> you know, it happens. I, I actually, I went out um, for a friend uh -huh. and... Um, was DDing for the night, you know, just sitting on the couch, ready to go home. It was, it was about two, and someone slides up next to me, and he was DDing as well, designated driving. So we were like, hello. Uh -huh. Best conversation I've ever had in a club, let me just say. And he <laughs> didn't know you were, like, known and famous and on TV, huh? No, you know, he actually didn't right he away. Didn't. Like, a couple weeks into his texting, um, he ended up telling me, he's like, he sent me a picture. There was a billboard outside of his neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I was haunting him. <laughs> He was like, is that? Yeah, that is Sierra. And that's how he found out? Yes. Oh, my God. Well, congrats on Good Trouble. Oh my it's back Thanks for so the fifth season? Yes, season oh five. God. And you've been playing a character for 10 years? I have. That's amazing. Yes, we did The Fosters and Good Trouble as a spinoff. And it's just, it's been such an amazing ride growing up alongside Mariana. And the fact that people still want to hear these beautiful stories and have, like, given us so much support and love over the years is, is amazing. It's amazing. You're doing well. Oh, You're airing you. a special, yes. 
We have a special episode airing tomorrow. Can you tell everyone what it's about? I do. Oh my goodness. Well, my mamas, Miss Terry Polo and mm -hmm. Sherry Som, come to visit. You know, everyone knows. In your 20s, you need your parents more than ever, yeah. honestly. And Mariana is a, at a bit of a crossroad. She's going to have to make a really, really difficult decision. So her mamas give her a mama sandwich and help her solve her problems. So it's going to be a really, really good episode. I think people are going to love it. All right. Clearly, we already do. Thank you for coming. Will you come back yes, again? Absolutely. We'll do scary. My goodness. I'll try. <laughs> Your Trouble airs Thursday at 10 on Freeform. And the next day on Hulu, we'll be right back. I've met some incredible fans this season, and when our next guest wrote into the website, I knew we had to surprise her today. Her name is Brianna Daniel, and she wrote in to tell me about all the amazing work she's doing to help those who are less fortunate. Well, I think she deserves a little joy today, so let's surprise her right now, y'all. Brianna! Huh? <gasps> Yeah. I think we did it. Welcome to the Jennifer Hudson Show. Oh my gosh, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you surprised to see me? A little bit, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> well, well I, I'm going to let you have you look at it. She's still having a moment. <laughs> A whole moment. I'm going to hold oh the goodness. line and I wait am, for you. I was just listening to you, girl. Girl, oh, what was you listening yes. to? What was I doing? I mean, act like a lady, think like a man. I mean, act like a lover was... and think like a man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I heard you was a fan. Tell me, what made you write into the show? It was because I wanted everyone to know about a nonprofit that I started named Street Teen Movement. And we provide hygiene to the unhoused. Wow. So what we do is we do laundry services a couple times a week. We do remedial aid. So that's personal, dental, feminine hygiene products, mm -hmm. along with clothing and shoes. And because of the pandemic, we had to pivot our model a little bit. So we actually do that now through hygiene vending machines. So our unhoused friends are able to access and really like... <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that sounds yeah. amazing. What inspired yeah, you to want to all of it? <laughs> what inspired you to make you want to start the program? Honestly, it was just I did I was so unaware. I thought I had this idea of what homelessness was. I thought I knew, you know, what homeless people needed. And honestly, I, I hadn't a clue. So I was jogging around a lake one day mm -hmm. and I went to one of our transient friends who I would speak to very often and asked him, like, how many people around this lake are unhoused? And he pointed to, like, 80, 90% of the people that were there. Oh my God. For me, it just, right. So my face was looking about like yours, and it was just, it was really eye-opening. So I actually lived on the streets for 32 days, voluntarily homeless, so I could really figure out what the people that we wanted to serve needed. I didn't want to make any assumptions, and... It was, you know, such an inspiring thing to want to be able to help people, yeah. but to also be able to experience what they experience, to be able to bring them services, not that I think that they need, but that they actually want and need. To understand from their perspective that. <laughs> that. Oh, my God. It's so amazing. How does it feel like the impact that you're having on the people and with your efforts? It's... It feels amazing, honestly. It is so inspiring to, to hear the stories of, you know, the impact that we're able to make with our programming. So one of my favorite ones is a story of these two brothers that dropped in on laundry night one day. And they, you know, they had their clothes, they came in as walk-ins, and they had a job interview that they were talking about the next day. So, you know, we got the clothes washed up, got them fed, you know, everyone went on their separate ways. They text us the next day, saying not only did they get the jobs, the hiring manager noted how clean their clothes were oh because God. they're welders. It's really dirty work, but they honestly said that, yeah, you guys came in, your white shirts were white, 
Your khakis were pressed. You guys were looking to the nines, and that just really made you stand out amongst all the other applicants. Mm. And they both walked out with jobs. <laughs> that is so beautiful. So amazing of you to do that, and and I hope I hope this helps give you a, even more of a platform so you can inspire others to help out in that way. And if nothing else, look from other people's perspective, and that will help make the difference as well. That's true Team J-Hub material. I'm just like, you know, you doing the thing, okay, girl? Okay? I think you deserve a little something for yourself. So I would like to fly you here to come to the Jennifer Hudson Show and give you a treat. Okay, Brynn? Thank you for being as amazing as you are, please. Keep making the world a better place and keep shining, and I can't wait to see you, girl. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.